What has four legs, four arms, and a malicious intent to force you to worship it? That would be Motor, the monster in the 2017 horror film, The Ritual. In this video, we're going to explore the biology, mythology, and symbolic meaning of this creature. While the film is based on a book of the same name, I will focus on the movie version of the monster, as the book version is quite different both physically and behaviorally. The creature design for Motor is perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of the film. Not only is it striking within the context of the movie, but in my opinion, it is one of the most unique creature designs in recent memory. When we finally get a full glimpse of Motor in the film, she is clearly deer-like in form. Indeed, many online articles about this monster have described it more specifically as elk-like, and I initially agreed. However, upon further research, I discovered that the word elk can refer to two related species. If we're using the North American version of the word, then the species to which it refers is not native to Sweden, where the story takes place. However, in Sweden, the word elk is used to refer to the largest member of the deer family, what North Americans call moose. And based on both motor's size... Wow, Kalia, look at him, he's huge! Hey there, bud! and sloping back, I believe that Motor is more superficially moose-like than any other deer species. Looking more closely though, we can see that Motor is far more than just a large and horrific moose roaming the forests of Sweden. Another distinct physical feature that Motor possesses is that it appears as if plants are growing on her body. This leaves us with two mutually inclusive possibilities. One is that plants are indeed growing on her body, and two is that Motor's body is adapted to simply look like it has vegetation growing on it. Are there real-world examples of either of these features? Yes to both. Sloths have symbiotic relationships with the algae that live in their fur. The algae in their fur can even turn their coats green, providing additional camouflage. As well, Flower mantises mimic the appearance of plants in order to avoid being noticed by, or even to lure, their prey. The orchid mantis is perhaps the most well-known example of this. Another quickly noticeable feature of Motor is that her head is shaped like that of a human torso. We'll get into the symbolic meaning of that later, but for the moment, let's examine whether this partial mimicry is a real thing in nature. And, indeed, it is. And it's quite common, in fact. The hawk moth caterpillar's eye-like pattern makes it look like a snake. Owl butterflies have a similar eye-like pattern on their wings to make them look like owls. The Iranian spider-tailed horned viper's tail is adapted to look remarkably like a spider. By moving this lure across the rocks on which it sits, it attracts birds that quickly become its prey. Less noticeable are what appear to be arms emerging from the genital region of the creature. The book refers to motor as a female, and the word motor itself means mother in Swedish. So in the case that motor is indeed female, then perhaps these arm-like appendages aid in giving birth and gently bring the offspring to the ground. This is somewhat reminiscent of ovipositors found in some insect species. However, if motor is male, then perhaps these arms aid in coercive, or forced, mating. Males of many insect species have physical adaptations for this that allow them to stay in contact with the female while she tries to evade their mating attempts. Another possibility is that these may indeed be arms. Research published in the November 2014 issue of Nature found that the dual penises found in many snake and lizard species develop directly from budding hind limbs. It wouldn't then be too much of a leap to imagine fully developed limbs emerging in such a way. Moving on to behaviors, we see that Motor marks her targets with a set of imprints on their chests. Similarly, the Komodo dragon follows its prey, sometimes for days, after biting and injecting them with venom. For victims that Motor wishes to dispatch of more quickly, she has something else in store. She kills them by impaling their bodies on nearby trees. And yet again, as gruesome as this is, we can still find real-life analogs in nature. The butcher bird and the shrike are well known for impaling the bodies of their prey on thorns and even barbed wire to make it easier for them to feed. One minor difference, though, is that while Motor actually kills her victims by impaling them, butcher birds and shrikes only impale their victims after they've been pecked to death. I'm honestly not sure whose victims are luckier. 
Motor appears to dip into the supernatural with her ability to induce and view the nightmares of her victims. Further, she is shown creating hallucinatory images around her victims based on those nightmares and can even disguise herself as a person from someone's memories. This one, obviously, is hard to find an animal counterpart for. While there are several myths about animals like snakes hypnotizing their prey, they are just that. Myths. However, one animal may come close. The cuttlefish. Using special skin cells, they are able to create a wide variety of amazing and beautiful color patterns. One of these, called the passing cloud, can apparently disarm prey long enough for the cuttlefish to attack. But there may be more ways of explaining Motor's apparently supernatural ability if we leave the animal kingdom. That's right. Shrooms. Psilocybin mushrooms can have strong and potentially nightmare-like effects on people who consume them. When ingested, they can induce visual, auditory, and tactile hallucinations, as well as strong emotional effects. The Liberty Cat Mushroom is one of the stronger types of psychedelic mushroom, and is native to Sweden. Therefore, one could argue that Motor, or the villagers that worship her, secretly drugged the film's protagonists to cause their nightmares and waking hallucinations. Though, this would give them little control over what the hallucinations would be, and it still doesn't explain how Motor seemed to know about what each character dreamed. Still, it's surprising that so much of what Motor is and can do can be tied directly to analogs found in nature. In the film, Motor is described as a god, ancient, one of the Yutan, a bastard offspring of Loki. The term Yutan is a catch-all term for a wide variety of beings in Norse mythology, including trolls, giants, and other supernatural entities. Some are described as beautiful, while others are described as grotesque, the latter of which describes Motor to a T. Motor is also said to be the bastard child of Loki, commonly known as the Norse trickster god. What I find particularly interesting is that Loki is a shapeshifter, able to appear as people or animals. If Motor is indeed the child of Loki, then it seems as though she is able to use powers similar to her father. Okay. Mom? According to legend, Loki had many children, some with his wife Sigyn, but other bastard children with the mother of monsters, Angerboda. This would make Hel, the ruler of the underworld, Fenrir, the giant wolf, and Jormungandr, the world serpent that will bring about Ragnarok, all Motor's siblings. This certainly puts her in terrifying company. But another one of Loki's offspring that caught my eye was Sleipnir, the eight-legged horse. Like Sleipnir, Motor has eight limbs and is an ungulate, or an animal with hooves. As well, Sleipnir is said to be able to ride to Hell, the land of the dead. In the ritual, we see that Motor also has a special relationship with death, namely being able to delay it in her followers. So, could it be that the myth of Sleipnir was inspired by Motor long ago in the ritual verse? Or perhaps Motor is some grotesque and forgotten sibling of the revered steed of the gods. Further evidence that Motor is somehow at least related to the gods is her desire to have worshippers. From her perspective, the story of the movie is her attempt to make Luke join her small band of acolytes, ultimately failing. Those who do choose to follow her are blessed, or perhaps cursed, with an extended, pain-free life, Though we see that her oldest followers have withered into nearly comatose mummies, and that they can be killed by things like fire and gunshots. It's also interesting to note that she only chooses those with the greatest suffering in their hearts to join her cult. Perhaps this is because she feeds off of their pain, or perhaps those that have the greatest trauma are easiest to mold into the worshippers that she desires. 
Those that don't meet her gruesome standards become sacrifices, and their deaths are maybe a psychological tool to keep her followers in line. At the climax of the film, Luke stands up to Motor, facing his fears and refuses to worship her. In this moment, we see that Motor is able to be physically injured and, in the end, stops pursuing Luke. One possibility is that Motor is unable to leave the forest. Another, and one that I prefer, is that she realized that Luke will not succumb to his fear and guilt anymore. These are the tools by which Motor operates. Thus, she gives up on him and no longer chases him. Motor wants and likely needs worshippers. This is hinted at by her insistence on Luke bowing down to her. By this point, all of her other cultists have been killed, either by Luke or by her, in what appears to be rage. One would imagine that the man who destroyed her hellish temple and murdered her followers would be deserving of her wrath. And yet, after all of this, we still see Motor trying to make Luke worship her. Perhaps this is done out of desperation, as she has no followers left to worship her. If this is the case, and Motor indeed needs some number of worshippers to survive, then I wonder what her fate is beyond the credits of the film. Motor is one of the best horror monsters in recent memory, not only because she is literally able to make her victim's worst fears bubble to the surface, but also because of the disturbingly surreal design behind this creature. She is made up of familiar parts arranged in a disconcerting way. Her head is like a human torso. Arms are where the legs of this torso head should be. Her face, where the genitals should be. And branches for arms of this torso head. This, all on the body of a giant, moss-covered, skeletal moose. The grotesque amalgamation of the familiar arranged in a disturbing order is part of what makes this monster so scary. Despite getting a few decent glances of motor in the film, we never truly see her face. Moreover, her design alludes to the idea of losing one's identity. A torso is where the head should be. The head of this torso is missing. And shadows obscure all but her eyes, peering out from where this torso head's genitals should be. This hiding of her true face could connect with how she forces psychologically pained individuals to give up their freedom and worship her with the rest of her cult, in which they are forced to conform to Motor's brutal rule. It's particularly interesting that Motor's true face is located directly where the genitals of her male torso-shaped head would be. Could this suggest that she emasculates her male victims? Does it hint at some form of sexual trauma? The film itself doesn't seem to go into this, but it's interesting to speculate and makes one wonder what else this beast could represent if given more time on the silver screen. In conclusion, the combination of Motor's biology, the mythology surrounding her, and the meanings we can form around her design make this creature one of the most intriguing in horror cinema. If you enjoyed this video or have something to add, please let us know down below in the comments section. Also, it'd be a big help if you'd like and subscribe to this channel. We're still a very small channel, so every like and subscription means a lot to us. More episodes will be coming soon, so until then, thanks so much for watching.